pray for many people to be healed, but some are and some aren't. Why is that the case on this episode of Inverse? For the past three months, we've been looking at, from episode to episode, different vignettes in the book of James. And we finally come to our conclusion in James chapter 5. We're so happy that you decided to join us here at Inverse. My name is Justin Kim, and in the studio we have Sebastian Israel and Siku. And we're looking at our final episode, or no, a penultimate episode, I should say, mm -hmm. in the book of James. We're going to go to James chapter 5, verse 13 through 20. I want to encourage you to take out your Bibles and read along with us in the translation of your choice. And also go to inversebible.org and download our Bible study guide and follow along with us in your own time, in your own pace, in your own privacy of your home. Um, let's go to chapter 5, as we mentioned. And Sebastian, can you pray for us? Yes. Let's pray. Father in heaven, uh, we, we understand, Lord, our limitations, and we understand that there is so much more that we can learn and grasp through the words of this book that the time would fail us to explore. But we pray now that as we come to the final words of the book of James and bring our study of this specific letter to a conclusion, that its principles would not lose their influence on our lives beyond. Guide us now as we talk and continue to be with our understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And Siku, if you don't mind reading for us. Sure. Um, verse 13. If anyone among you, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another, and pray for one another, that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I love the way that James writes. He has these, uh, these, these proverbs, in a sense, and a little, a little sermonette, and he goes off. And then uh, goes on, as August goes off, goes on. <laughs> and then he gives examples. Uh, we didn't have a tough time on last episode, but um, he does mention the character of Job, mm -hmm. the perseverance of Job. Here he mentions Elijah. Mm -hmm. uh, the book of James presupposes your knowledge of the Old Testament. So if you have no idea on who these are, uh, characters of the Bible or just read the Old Testament. Just pick up your Bible and just go from Genesis all the way to Malachi. It's a quick read and you'll get knowledgeable, <laughs> you some uh, background knowledge on, on what, what James is talking about. So um, Israel, what uh, have we covered? Just kind of do an, uh, a flyby of the book of James and where are we at the yeah. end here? I think when you, for me now, as we've read it together and as we've talked, the book of James to me is a manual on how to experience life as a Christian. Mm. Uh, it differentiates between fake Christianity, real Christianity, and it gives us different examples of what that looks like. That, that, that term real religion has kind of been a phrase that we've come back to, or yeah. real Christianity is just over and over yeah. a theme. Yeah, real mm -hmm. religion. And, and uh, immature religion is fake religion. You know, mm. mature religion is real religion. Mm. And what does that mean? When someone is mature, you're going to have faith. You're going to endure. You're going to take into, into context the fact that there is a, heaven reality, a heavenly reality that intersects with our human reality. This impacts the way we relate to other people. And there are uh, significant and very deep, deep, deep uh, elements 
that will surface to the front when we become or, or to the top when we become real Christians. We're going to act differently, not just in what we say and do, but in our inmost, uh, deepest core as a human being. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, James is a great entry point to, into the New Testament. You know, Paul goes into his justification and glorification and sanctification. Hebrews talks about the, the heavenly priesthood and the heavenly things. And sometimes that's kind of inaccessible for your first uh, entry True. point. But James is like, watch your words. Uh, be patient. Uh, hey, pay the people that, that mow your lawn kind mm -hmm. of thing. And, and it's very, very <laughs> normal uh, yeah. normal entry yeah. points. Which is funny because it's funny because Paul, whereas Paul wanted to get rid of the book of James, I've come to the... Luther. Luther. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Luther. <laughs> they were friends. Paul was cool. Yeah, yeah. They're homies, yeah. yeah they're homies. Whereas Luther wanted to get rid of the book of James, uh, I've come to the conclusion that even if you have the book of James alone, mm. you have enough in life to, to live a godly life. Mm -hmm. well, we do believe in Toda Scriptura. We believe the entire Bible, <laughs> yes, not just yes, yes. one is higher than the other. But we do understand in concept and because we're in friends. In context. In context. And yeah. concept, context is critical to James. Thank you for, for correcting my correction <laughs> of, your, of, your, of, your, of your come. Anyway, so let's, get, let's go to verse uh, 13. Uh, our, our, this, this episode's title is An Abrupt Ending, and indeed, this is the an ending to a letter. Uh, we see the other letters, they're kind of, they end in saying, hey, say goodbye to say goodbye, guys. salute, 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 right. to, uh, kiss the brethren, and saying, and grace be unto you. But here, James doesn't do that at all. It's just like, oh my, no Wi-Fi, and just, and then the email went out. You know, just <laughs> I, I, I interpret it more like he just drops the mic. Mic drop. Mic yeah. drop. Okay, mic drop. <laughs> we have a rap star here yeah. amongst us. Okay. So verse 13, he's talking about prayer, and he ends on this theme of prayer and all, also on reclamation of, of the lost. Mm -hmm. um, so, hey, let's juice this out. Now, what do we see in verse 13 and 14? Sebastian. One of the things that immediately jumps to me is this inversion of a common thing you hear many times in churches where they say, I was sick and no one came to visit me. Mm. Or I was, I was sick and shut in and no one called. And James inverts that and says, is any among you sick in verse 14? Let him call. Yeah. for the elders, right? Mm. And there's, there's this sense that we put this burden on the church leadership that James is saying in the same sense, right? You're not just waiting there and saying, well, I'm sick, so let me just see what Jesus is going to do. Mm. But the leper came to Jesus, mm. right? The centurion came to Jesus. They weren't just sitting at home, and maybe Jesus will stop by my house. He knows that my servant is sick because he's the son of God. Like, he understands all things, right? And so why should I even ask? The south. <laughs> <laughs> the south of Jerusalem. You know. <laughs> the south side. The south side. So when you, when you look at this, because I'm in the south, so I'm, I'm used to that accent. Yeah. So, southern and, and, of the United States. <laughs> all right, go ahead. That's right. And it's, it's a really... Um, shocking change from what I'm used to hearing as an elder myself. It's yeah. just like, oh yeah, complain, 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 because this never happened. And James is like, no, the Bible says you call for the elders, mm. right? You sing Psalms, right? This is not waiting for some external thing to happen, like the paralytic waiting for the troubling of the waters. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, well, I have no man to bring me. It's, it's in a very sense, God is expecting us to cooperate with his grace mm -hmm. and to believe that Jesus wants to heal he wants to bring us back, and that's why I'm going to call for the elders because he set that up for yeah. my benefit mm -hmm. as the sick. I looked at it the same way, but different at the same time because mm -hmm. I, I, I noticed that too. I'm like, you know, is anyone sick? You do this. Is anyone happy? You do this. Yep. Is anyone suffering? You do this. And I, I kind of took that more along the context of or within the, the line of our need to understand our need for mm. others. We can't do this on our own. You know, like yeah. if you're suffering, don't try to do this on your own. Don't try to get through it by yourself. Yep. If you're happy, don't try to keep it to yourself, right? Because mm -hmm. the praise here is praise to God. It's talking about Psalms, spiritual songs, yeah. right? If you're sick, don't try to take that in on your own. But in the Christian experience, it takes maturity to, under, especially with our Western way of thinking nowadays, you know, we think yeah. I have to do this by myself because it shows that I'm strong. And mm. here it says, no, there's actually an element of strength and maturity, and yeah, and and it yeah. and it takes us it, it takes a strong person to know that they are weak, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. that's I think what he's expressing. Mm -hmm. No, all great in the context of uh, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, 
do not grumble, uh, don't complain. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> there is a, like, it's, well, you mentioned this in the previous episode, he kind of sprinkles these concepts in chapter one and then goes in depth in the middle. And then he's kind of sprinkling on the past mm -hmm. comps right at the end, but under the, the, the practical rubric of a prayer and of meeting specific needs. That's, that's the chapter heading that I have in my, in my section there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, anything else that you see there? Is, is I have that too. <laughs> Justin, there's also a, a specific expression, right, that James is really getting practical here. I mean, this is like precise laser pinpoint. Minutia. Of Are you suffering? Local church. Let him pray. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Are you cheerful? Let him sing. <laughs> I was like, mm -hmm. he's basically giving you the specific like, okay, you got this. Okay, do this. You're this. Okay, do this. And the, the concept of you suffering and the response being prayer mm -hmm. is an interesting one because when I think about the moments when I'm suffering, the first thing we normally want is sympathy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's almost as if James is, is reminding us that in that desire for sympathy, there's no one who's more touched by your situation and the feelings of your infirmities than Jesus. Mm -hmm. And this is, should be the initial response. And um, a, a good friend, I went to preach at this small church and the guy said to me after I preached a sermon about worrying, he said, you know, um, I heard this preacher say one time, you know, why worry when you can pray and why pray if you're going to worry? Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, once you place it into the hands of God, you have to trust that Jesus is going to see it through and that Jesus knows. Right. Which we talked about earlier in the lesson. Mm -hmm. So I really love this really specific, practical thing. What should I do? And I feel like our generation today, young people want to know what do you, what should I do? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I'm all good on the theology and I get the idea of what you're saying and you know, God loves me even amidst my suffering, but what should I be doing practically? And James is like, go ahead and pray. Mm -hmm. what, what struck me was, was the, the next one actually that mm -hmm. he talks about in verse 13, where he says, is anyone cheerful? Let him sing Psalms. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it struck me because apparently there is an inappropriate way to deal with joy mm -hmm. because he is uh -huh. giving um, wow. instruction on what do you do yeah he's prescribing if you are cheerful and so so that really struck me um, that we can be joyful we can be cheerful and respond in the wrong way as a Christian so mm -hmm. there's a right way to respond when we experience joy I remember um, uh, when when I was uh, my, my immigration stuff was going on uh, when I was uh, a few years back and I, I got news from the from USCIS that some petitions that I'd been working on had been approved. And the joy and relief that I experienced, mm -hmm. I mean, I was, I was like, <laughs> you know, didn't know yeah. what to do with myself. And in that moment it hit me, I thought, wow, like what do I do with all of this? Yeah. You know, like who do Exciting. I call first? Like yeah. who do I, and, and, it, and, and it was kind of like a rebuke that mm -hmm. the first person I thought to talk to wasn't Jesus. Mm. Mm. Well, hold that thought. We want to hear who you talk to and how you resolve that when we come back after the break. Welcome back. We've been talking about the biblical way to express joy. And Siku was talking about her interactions with uh, the USCIS. So share okay. with us. You've been. <laughs> I, I caught you in mid sentence and yeah. and and and. No, I, I was, sure. what I was saying was as as I was I was as I was in that experience of joy, which is one of the happiest moments, uh, you know, in because it's a long time coming. It's yeah. a lot of yeah. emotional turmoil, mm -hmm. and then you get this this message that your petition has been approved, and in that joy, it was what do you do? You know, mm -hmm. how do you express joy? How do you express this happiness? Mm -hmm. um, and it really it really came as a rebuke to me when I stopped and I really thought about it. I'm like, okay, so what do I do? And it was like, have you taken time to talk to Jesus about this? And I felt rebuked that it didn't just come naturally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm thankful that <laughs> that I, you know, when I had the presence of mind to stop and think about it, that it was like, no, you need to talk to Jesus about mm -hmm. it. And what he's saying here is let him sing psalms because when you're happy, you don't just talk, you sing. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like, yeah. mm -hmm. It's like this is the, the ultimate expression of emotion mm -hmm. in your joy is sing psalms to mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, can I push that for uh, what any any psalms you recommend? Any uh, was there a psalm that you sang? Yes, uh, was uh, it, it wasn't a psalm I sang. Uh, there's a psalm that 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 
comes to me in those kind of moments, mm -hmm. like when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, mm -hmm. we were like them that yeah. dream, mm -hmm. and yeah. then were our mouths yeah. filled with laughter. Like that's the sound that came to my mind. Psalm 126. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good one, good one. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the reggae, not the reggae version, the regular version. Reg yes. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so if you don't know that, uh, moving on, uh, we see this entire <laughs> section is bathed in prayer, bathed in prayer, and there is the outstanding question that we should pray for the sick, uh, would do, every person that we pray for, does the Lord always answer that prayer? And what are the conditions? I know that's, that, that condition sounds almost as a, as a clinical word, yeah. uh, but what, 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 how can we help those who maybe ha who have that question, and not in answering the question, but maybe even in a deeper way of addressing the, it? The purpose, uh, of, the purpose of prayer in times of illness is not only to heal the illness, mm -hmm. right? but is to be able to deal with the process and to handle the result. Like if you think about it, if I'm going to die and there's no way to rescue me from that, I'd rather die as a praying person. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd rather die mm. in the hands of God mm -hmm. yeah. than to die uh, or to go through that experience with, you know, a frantic, yeah. uh, and not just that, but with like a frantic anxiety of not knowing what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so here, the, the idea is, we always go for medical care. Medical care is a blessing from God. But even in the midst of medical care, we cannot forget the necessary presence of Christ in the midst of the most difficult moments in, in our lives, which are the moments of, of illness. Mm -hmm. and, and in that, you experience sweet communion with God. I've been, you know, you guys know this, but I think other people might not know. I've gone through experiences in my life where the, some of the most important people in my life died. And through that process, I remember when my brother was ill, I remember at being at the hospital and praying to God, God, please, like, you know, I didn't eat, I didn't sleep, I, di I did not leave his side for like three or four days, um, or even longer, I think it was like a week. And, and he was, you know, on the balance of life and death. And finally, the time came when they had to give a, sur they, they had to perform a surgery on him. He was so ill, they could not take him to the operating room. They had to give him surgery right in the ICU. The doctor came in told me that this was going to happen. They said, look, your brother might die just from the cut. That might kill him right there. And in that process, as I was praying to God, like, you know, I'm not ready. That was my prayer to God was like, I'm not ready for this. I just can't right now. I'm not ready for this. I need more time. Please give me more time, et cetera, et cetera. And then as I'm praying to God, this is what he says to me. He says, tell the doctor to pray. And, and, and when he said that, I'm like, this is so ridiculous, God. Like, what do you mean tell the doctor to pray? Like, the doctor's not a Christian. What, you know, I'm like, I don't want to be that pushy Christian where, you know, like, you must pray and then whatever, right? <laughs> and the doctor, and I said, I can't do it. That was my response to God is like, I can't do it. And what hit me was, even in your most desperate circumstances, you can't follow my will. Mm. Mm. And, and it shocked me, right? And so finally... I said, Lord, you got to have patience with me. I just can't do this. And finally, the, per the doctor came three or four times, you know, giving me news of what's going on. And then I said, if the doctor comes again, then I'll talk to her and I'll just say it. And then the doctor came back. Sure enough, she comes back. And then I said, look, I'm not expecting you to perform a miracle. I know this is out of your hands. You've already said that. But I'm wondering if you would just be willing to have a word of prayer before you operate. Mm. And... And then she said, you know, I forgot what she said. I'll see what I can do or something like that. Came back, you know, he survived the surgery. And she said, you know, we had a moment of silence and we and people who wanted to pray prayed. But my brother ended up dying. You know, the thing is that I never would have understood so many things about myself and so many things about salvation, about my, my brother and about God trying to save the lives of doctors and nurses that are caring to him mm. if I did not come to him in prayer. And so as much as prayer is we pray for healing and we pray for salvation, and we pray for all these things, there are so many other deeper issues that surface through that exercise that we would miss out if we don't do this, heed this counsel from Scripture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I, I, um, I really appreciate, you know, you're sharing that. Um, and I think sometimes we get we get caught up in the destination and we miss the journey, right? The 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 experience that we're supposed to have, you know, that we're we're thinking about. I want healing, but God is trying to do something in that process, mm -hmm. right? Um, and the thing that um, comes to my mind here in verse 16, because um, it's talked about the prayer of faith. Well, God can do it. Mm -hmm. Right? There's nothing that is 
too difficult for God. Yes. Right. But when he says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. He brings in this element of um, confessing sin. Right. Um, there are some illnesses that come because of our sinful lives, because I have been making choices that are not in accordance with what I know is right to do. And it's kind of like, God, I want the health and I want the healing, but I don't want to live in accordance with your will, right? With what it takes to have that type of a life. I don't want, I don't want the cancer, but I want to smoke. You know, I don't want, you know, the, 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 the heart attack, but I want to eat whatever and however I want at whatever time I want, right? It's kind of, I want the blessing, but I don't want the obedience, mm. right? And, and part of the healing um, th just reading this text, it just made me think of Jesus. When Jesus healed, it wasn't just about the physical, right? And yet saying it's not just about the physical healing. There's a spiritual healing that God wants to perform in our lives. So even as we're praying for those who are sick, as we're coming to God in our sickness, he's saying it's not just about the physical healing, but there's a spiritual healing that I'm trying to bring about in your life, in the lives of those around you, when, as you're confessing your sins to one another, as your trespasses to one another, there's something that I want to do in your spiritual lives that is more important actually than whether you're going to live on this earth because ultimately I want to live with you in eternity. Mm. I would just even modify a little bit to complete healing. It's not just right, physical right. healing, spiritual healing, it's emotional right. healing. It, there's so much, you know, it's complete and total healing and I appreciate that you brought that up. That at the end of the day, we cannot experience healing, total healing, outside of an acknowledgement of our sinfulness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So many thoughts going on in my mind right now. Um, you guys bring so, so many good points. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'd like to go to verse 15 here, and it says that the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. We know that every time we ask uh, the Lord to, to raise people, He always will. Yeah. Uh, we just don't know the timing of when He will raise, right. uh, but we know He will. Um, and so with that already secure, it's uh, all these other forms of healing that the Lord mm -hmm. has in mind. And so m maybe the time is not g appropriate or, 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 you know, in His providence, who knows? And, and the great thing is we will know what all these conditions are in the future. You know, with, Justin. Uh, it, what other subsidiary uh, healings may take place as mm -hmm. a result. Sebastian. It kind of takes me back to, um, you know, several experiences I've had praying for people who are dying. And I think about, you know, one experience recently in my church, we had a lady call for the elders and we prayed over a husband who was sent home to die. And literally the Lord raised him up. I mean, went to the doctor and the issue was gone. He was walking, he opened the door the next day, I came to visit him. And it was literally amazing, right? God moved and answered that prayer of anointing. But then I've, been, I've gone in other situations um, with a young lady who's father was just coming around to giving his life to Christ, fell really ill through a surprise disease he didn't even know he had, and she was 15 coming to a Bible study I was holding, and her family was like, oh, this is the guy leading, the, he should pray, right? Because God's going to hear his prayer, mm -hmm. and we need him to live. And as I'm getting in there, the family was coming because he was, he was um, from out of the country. So people were flying in from all over the world, right? In this room, and it's like 20, 30 of these people in this house are like, all right, please, lead us in prayer and we need to raise him up. And I'm like, I have to let them know, like, I don't know what God's going to do. Um, but you know, we should pray and submit that to God. And after we prayed, he actually started to degenerate rapidly. So we prayed, left the room, the doctor came in, the nurse noticed something that was off and then he degenerated and within two hours he was dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the question of the daughter, right, she was crying and now she became um, the, she was only going to speak English and it took all this other work for her to file paperwork for her father's passing. And the question that the family was asking me is like, why would God allow this? And the only answer I could really come up with was the fact that in the book of Acts, you see the stoning of Stephen, right, ultimately led to the conversion of Paul. And the fact that sometimes God wants to use your death and other times he wants to use your life because the same Paul was stoned and was raised up again to continue to do his ministry and he must appear before Caesar. And so with this sense of like we pray for people, ultimately we must trust that God's purpose and what he's trying to do in this person's life to the broader 
controversy between Christ and Satan into the broader context of the universe and the glory of his name, like Lazarus, this is for the glory of God. And it may seem like I'm letting things go from bad to worse, but God is going to use that. And, and that's the main thing that has brought me comfort in those situations where you're praying for people and sometimes the result doesn't go the way that we want it to go. Mm -hmm. Earlier, earlier in, our, in, our, in our season, you talked about uh, patience to go through, mm -hmm. right? And actually, when you were saying that, I was going to say it then, but I, I didn't have enough time. But one of the greatest and most beautiful lessons that I learned about God was through the experience of death with my brother and my father. Because what came to my mind was Psalm 23 as I was praying. And it says, you know, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And, and God said to me, Israel, you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You don't dwell in it. You don't go around it. You walk through it. Mm -hmm. And instead of taking away death, I take away the fear of death, which is mm -hmm. the more, it's a more, even a more beautiful picture of who God is. Yep. And no matter what happens, whether people live or die, in, through prayer, in every circumstance, what always is revealed to us is the fact that God loves us mm -hmm. and God has the power to ultimately fulfill his will in saving us from the, the, the pain of death, the fear of death, and ultimately death itself. Mm -hmm. amen. amen, amen, amen. This uh, episode was, has been sobering to me about life's realities and James Clo concludes this letter in committing all of us to a community of faith and a community of prayer. Uh, I'm thinking in my own heart, do, do I have this community where we can pray for each other and uplift each other, especially when those, our loved ones are near death or if we are near death? Mm -hmm. Hopefully you have a community near you and if you don't, you want to find out uh, a Bible-centered, Christ-centered community that prays together. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next week as we conclude our study in the book of James. God bless you.